Hello and welcome back. I know it's been a few days. Voice is still kind of getting back to uh, to something you can listen to. Didn't want to drown you out with uh, the gravel in my throat. But I appreciate you coming back to learn a little bit more about the Nikon Z9, what I've been doing with it. And in this video, we will talk about two things. Number one is the firmware update. If you've not updated your firmware or you don't know about how you can now m update your firmware via the SnapBridge app. I'll walk you through the screens. It's super easy. I'm telling you right now, the, the best experience I've had updating firmware ever. Number two, I want to get back to the GPS. I have figured out a few things about the GPS on the Nikon, and um, it really, um, I'm not sure I'm happy with it, but we'll take it for what it is, and we'll hope there are changes or future updates. So thanks for joining. Please subscribe. As always, your comments are appreciated, especially for content ideas um, or for me to answer any additional questions that you have. So let's get started with the firmware update. Literally, all you have to do, turn the camera on, connect to the, your phone, your mobile device, turn on this, uh, the SnapBridge app, and it will let you know that the firmware is ready to be downloaded. Just have a camera in the car, or the, cam the card in the camera. Don't put a camera in the card, put a card in the camera. And it will walk you through these simple steps. Here are a number of the screens. I think it took maybe five minutes for the entire uh, process. I was on my home Wi-Fi, um, depending on your data plan. I'm not sure I'd recommend doing this, um, especially a large firmware update via a mobile device on a, on a cellular plan. But on my home Wi-Fi, um, it went very quickly, simply let me know when it was finished, told me to turn the camera off and then back on, and I was done and updated. And as you can see through this walkthrough, all of the screens, pretty self-explanatory, um, and it took no time at all. No more having to uh, attach your card reader to your computer, transfer the download and transfer the firmware update, put it in the camera, and hope everything goes right. That's number one. Number two, I'm a stickler on location. The coordinates that I use typically with my D500 or other Nikon cameras have come out of my phone and into the camera. Yes, there is built-in GPS in this camera. I'll give them that. Now, is it the most accurate GPS? Well, as you can see, if you take time to print out the manual, there are a lot of uh, cautions regarding location data. Let me read you a few. Um, satellite signals may be blocked or reflected in the locations listed below, rendering the data acquired less accurate. You ready for this? In buildings or underground, between tall buildings, under bridges, in tunnels, near power lines, in dense forest, <clears throat> or in metal briefcases or other containers. Now, I don't know about you, I shoot a lot in buildings or between tall buildings. I've done a fair amount of photography under bridges, a couple of times in tunnels. It's hard to avoid a power line. Now, I'm not a nature photographer. For those who you are, you probably are in dense forest. This is really disturbing to me that it's this inaccurate. Here's why. I tried to, and I've not successfully got my location data to stream from my mobile device through SnapBridge into the Nikon Z9 yet. If you figured it out, let me know in the comments below. But here's where I shot on Friday night. As you can see, the GPS is all over the place picking up image locations. I was in one building, not according to this. In addition, when using my mobile device, I was able to <clears throat> go into maps and pinpoint the exact location that I wanted to, and that location tied to whatever pin they had, and that data went into my phone. So I didn't have a difficult time when I post these photos of denoting the building that I'm in that the performance took place in. Now, I don't know if this will be handled in the future, realizing that any GPS that's in a device like this is somewhat limited, 
I'm wondering what can be done and if possible to start using SnapBridge again to get that data from my phone into the camera for my location data. If any of you have figured this out, let me know. Um, as you can tell, I am printing out the pages. Here we have pages uh, 204 to 206. Um, I'm printing them on the go. There are 914 of them. So as needed, I'm trying to figure this out. But if you figured out how to get SnapBridge to send your mobile location into the Nikon for continuous read, please, by all means, leave it in the comments below. That's all I have today. I did shoot a lot this past Friday. I'll, my next video will be a comparison video of the file types. I bracketed out everything from the top of the line fine to the basic fine. We'll put them up against JPEG images on the screen so everyone can take a look and um, we'll make some comparisons from there. Otherwise, thanks you, thank you for coming uh, by today. I appreciate you supporting this YouTube channel that I've put together, watching these videos. Please encourage others to subscribe and comment below. For now, thank you very much. We'll see you soon.